Okay, good afternoon. We're here today to announce a dramatic change in the city's shelter-in-place order. The fundamental purpose of this order is, as the title says, to promote public health and economic recovery of Fresno to get people back to work by safely and responsibly phasing in the opening of all businesses in the shortest possible time frame. This is about thousands of jobs coming into Fresno. Effective at 12.01 a.m. next Tuesday, May 26th, all businesses in the city of Fresno that are not specifically prohibited to open by the state of California will be allowed to open their doors. Restaurant dining rooms may reopen once they receive, they receive approval from the Fresno County Department of Public Health and the state of California, which we hope will be any day now. The city of Fresno will no longer have a shelter-in-place order, but the stay-in-place order by the state will govern all actions not covered by the city's order, which has been the same since March 19th. We're taking a giant step forward today by taking our future and our destiny in our own hands. We're moving forward in a very safe and responsible manner to protect public health while getting our businesses open and our people back to work. All businesses that are currently open and all businesses that will be opening next Tuesday will still have to follow social distancing protocols to protect the health of their employees, their customers, and the community as a whole. We have also created the framework to get the county and the state to allow us to open up the rest of the businesses like beauty parlors, hair salons, nail salons, gyms, health clubs, tattoo shops, and more. We're also doing our best to allow you to return to church. And I'm sure you're tired of hearing people talk about flattening the curve. Today, the city of Fresno is flipping the script and saying that we believe we can effectively manage the curve to keep our most vulnerable people and our senior citizens safe while getting our businesses open and our people back to work. We are monitoring public health indicators in the community, and will adjust this program as necessary. The city can no longer suffer the economic devastation of businesses closed, people out of work, and the frustration and the despair that goes with that. I'm proud of the amazing resiliency and courage of our citizens. We are offering hope, and hope is a powerful word that guides us through the darkest nights to the light of day. But we're also offering more than hope. We're using our dimmer switch to control the light at the end of the pandemic tunnel. I would like to thank Mayor elect Jerry Dyer, Council President Miguel Arias, Council Members Luis Chavez, Mike Carbasi, Esmeralda Soria, Paul Capriolio, and Nelson Esparza for their tremendous teamwork and collaboration to help get us to this point where we can make this announcement today. I'd also like to thank our amazing staff at the City of Fresno, led by our amazing City Manager, Wilma Kwan, my Chief of Staff, Tim Mormon, and all the members of the Fresno Recovery Committee, which met earlier today. And I would be remiss if I did not thank my wife, Trish, and my family for their support during these very trying times. Your steadfast love it's helped me get through this difficult time. The complete emergency order will be posted on the city's website later this afternoon. And speaking next will be Jerry Dyer, who will be followed by Council President Miguel Arias, Council Member Luis Chavez, and Council Member Mike Carbasi. When they're finished, we'll take questions after all they're done. Jerry? Thank you, Mayor. I uh, appreciate that. and. Um, I appreciate also the, uh, all of the work that's gone on over the last uh, few weeks in coming to this, uh, this point. Uh, I can tell you that there have not been a shortage of meetings. There has not been a shortage of uh, debates and conversations, uh, not only internally here uh, with our uh, business recovery committee as well as the county of Fresno, including the Fresno County Health Officer, in uh, coming to the decisions that, uh, that we're making today. And I want to give you some of the takeaways. 
uh, in terms of what this order does and what this order does not do. And number one, uh, this order lifts the current city of Fresno shelter in place order as we know it. Uh, as you know, the state of California continues to have a stay at home uh, order uh, and various counties throughout uh, California have been issued uh, variances regarding that. In Fresno County, we're still seeking that variance. Uh, but as of, uh, as of uh, Tuesday morning, uh, 12.01 a.m., we will no longer have a shelter in place governed by the city of Fresno. Uh, secondly, uh, this order eliminates the requirement for people to wear a mask in public. Uh, that was a topic of debate. Um, and the language now in the, in the order says that people are strongly encouraged when they're in a public space, especially around people, uh, to wear a, a mask. Uh, the order also does require a mask to be worn when going into a governmental building uh, or into a, a business within the city of Fresno. Uh, the order uh, allows the city of Fresno to be able to phase in businesses uh, in what we know to be a safe and very reasonable manner. That uh, is important. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, the order provides businesses in Fresno the comfort uh, and, quite frankly, the clarity of knowing they are authorized to operate in the city of Fresno. And perhaps uh, just as important, it provides customers with the assurance that they are patronizing a business uh, which has specific safety measures uh, required of them. Uh, five, it eliminates uh, COVID-19 enforcement duties for the city of Fresno. Other than for flagrant violations against businesses that present an immediate danger to the public health. And so when there is any type of a citation issue, it's going to be as a last resort after the, there have been uh, a number of efforts taken in order to um, gain voluntary compliance. Six, it allows restaurants uh, to open up their dining rooms uh, in the city of Fresno once Fresno County has an approved variance from the state of California, uh, which we hope to be very, very soon. I know that they are working diligently uh, with the governor's office. I know as of, uh, as of late last night, uh, our mayor sent a text message to the governor in hopes of uh, facilitating that effort. Uh, number seven, this order allows all retail businesses to open for business in the city of Fresno, effective May 26 at 12.01 a.m. The order takes away the guideline of allowing one customer per every 500 square feet within a business and simply requires that there be sufficient space available in that business to allow for social distancing. We're going to leave that up to uh, the business owner to be responsible but we want to make sure that social distancing uh, is um, not only followed, but the wearing of masks by customers is followed as well. Nine, it provides a mechanism to be able to prevent the spread of COVID-19 throughout our community, especially with our most vulnerable populations, and we know who those members are in our community. And lastly, as you know, uh, many jurisdictions across the United States um, have opened without certain safeguards in place. Uh, what we're doing in the city of Fresno is taking proactive steps to be able to open business in a very safe and responsible manner. And I can tell you there's a percentage of the population out there today that simply wants business open at all cost. There's another percentage of the population that doesn't want business open at all. But the vast majority of the people that live in the city of Fresno want, business, want businesses to open in a very safe and responsible manner uh, so that they can feel comfortable going into that business. And I'm confident that the steps that we're taking uh, as a city is allowing for the employees, the customers, and the population as a whole to be safe within the city of Fresno. Now, it's time for Fresno to get back to work. Thank you. Miguel. Thank you, Mayor-elect Dyer and Mayor Brandon for your leadership in this. As we promised two weeks ago, our measured and responsible reopening continues today.
thanks to Mayor Brown's leadership and the long evenings and weekends that this committee has spent over the last 10 days, we are ready to open the next phase of getting presidents back to work. This has, made, this has been made possible by the governor's latest guidelines and the flexibility he's giving local communities like ours, and more importantly, the resources that he's committing to local communities during this emergency disaster declaration in his May budget revise. We will continue to lead during the pandemic despite personal, personal threats. We will continue to lead despite any political theater that takes place outside. And let me address that very directly. Now, there's been a lot, a, lot of, a lot of it has been made of constitutional rights of individuals. And it's clear for us that individuals have a constitutional right to have their opinion and at times to have extreme views, but they don't, they don't have a constitutional right to infect somebody else with the deadly virus. This measured and responsible reopening ensures that nobody is put at unnecessary risk during this pandemic. As the largest and most densely populated city that makes up the majority of the county of Fresno, we don't have the luxury to be reactive, to be extreme. We actually embrace the responsibility of being measured and to protect the public health of everyone that lives in our city. Today, the city council was briefed on the order outlined by the mayor, which also covered, uh, which council member Chavez will also cover and council member Carbasi. The community should know that Mayor Lee Brand, Mayor-elect Jerry Dyer, council-elect President Chavez, and the other council members are supportive of this order. Six of our council members our current mayor and our mayor-elect are all supportive unanimously of this effort. We still have a small and extreme voice of opposition, but we're not going to heed those loud screams, no matter how loud, how personal, and how threatened they become. Our responsibility is to ensure the public safety of everyone, not just to react to the extreme views of a few. The phase-in of our plan opens business while protecting the most vulnerable, helping the county meet its health care obligations, which Council Member Chavez will cover, safeguarding businesses and their employees. We've had a lot of essential employees out there. Just like you are today, your employer has made sure that you're protected as you do your essential work. We are making sure that the employees of every business in our city are also protected during this reopening and ensures that we maintain local control in case we have to change course for the reason of public safety. All these critical components ensure that residents have the public confidence necessary to go back to work, to shop, and to live in our city safely. And that's the primary goal of our council, majority, and of our mayor and mayor-elect to ensure that the public has the confidence to go back to work, live, shop safely, knowing that everybody's taking the necessary precautions that we can as a city doing this Un unparalleled pandemic. With that, I'll turn over to Council Member Chavez to cover the significant financial investment that we're dedicating to help the County of Fresno reach its required metrics in order for us to move to the next phase of opening. Thank you all for coming. You know, today as I was driving into City Hall, I was thinking about what this day means uh, to us. And today is the first step in trying to get back to normal. We've had one of the toughest eight weeks in our city's history. This pandemic has been our faith, disrupted our way of life, our livelihood, but it has sure as hell not broken our will. We understand that many of our residents now have been out of work, laid off, furloughed, without income for their families, for their children. The bills have been piling on, utilities, mortgages, and rent payments have not stopped. I felt I should say that publicly and acknowledge that from the city council's perspective. But now it's time to get back to work in a safe manner. And our city can now see that there's at least a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. However, it will not be business as usual. Everybody has a role to play in being responsible with our actions and our behavior. The way we ensure we reduce the infection rate in our county. We currently have, as of yesterday, 1,338 cases, 20 deaths, but that's just Fresno County. In the metropolitan area, there are over 3,000 cases and over 100 deaths. Those aren't just numbers. That's somebody's father, 
grandfather, mother, sister, brother, and those are losses that we mourn for every day. People that won't get an opportunity to celebrate Christmas, Thanksgiving, or another birthday. So we're here today to ask for your help. The city is coming to the table with $10 million to support and help the county fulfill their responsibility in securing the approval from the state for a safe reopening. $5 million will go to rapidly increasing testing so that we can meet the state requirement of 1,500 tests daily. Right now, in checking with them yesterday, I believe there are about 1,000. So we need to boost that up by another 500. Also, part of this expenditure will be to hire trace uh, contact folks that will ensure that those that test positive immediately self-isolate and disclose who they have come in contact with so that we can really get a better view of what the transmission and infection rate has been in the city of Fresno. But we can't do this alone. We need the public's help. How our residents behave and their direct actions will determine whether we continue to prolong this measure or get back to normal. If we have folks being irresponsible and engaging in behavior that infects other and not taking precautions, we will continue to see an increase in cases and ultimately more people getting sick and dying. The vast majority of new cases uh, have been determined to have been community spread and close contact. And that means that they came into contact with an infected person and transmitted this. So if you don't wanna take these precautions for yourself, please take them for your grandparents, for your uncle that has a heart condition, your aunt that has diabetes, or your daughter that has asthma. This is about protecting the vulnerable. The partnerships that we're working on will be with the county and helping set up drive-through testing sites, especially in neighborhoods that we know are underserved and have high-risk populations. We know that there are certain neighborhoods, particularly in South Fresno, that have populations with pre-existing conditions, diabetes, heart condition, asthma, and respiratory illnesses. The folks that we deemed essential for our way of life essentially live there. These are farm workers, meat packing workers, food processing and packing house workers. And it's critical and necessary that these folks stay healthy. The Central Valley is often referred to as the breadbasket of the world, the breadbasket of our country. And if those folks get sick and can't get to work, the country won't get fed, literally. So we're also proposing to collaborate with Fresno Unified and leverage those partnerships. Right now, as many of you know, our schools are out of session. In conversations with the school district, they have approximately 40 nurses and LVNs that are not at their school sites, but that are available. So we're proposing to use those licensed nurses to administer drive-through COVID testings at the same locations that they distribute uh, daily meals for our children. So what would that look like? So essentially eliminating the transportation barrier for our communities and our neighborhoods. They would essentially drive up to these uh, locations, which I believe right now are about 11 sites every middle school, pick up their meal, and at the same time get a COVID-19 test. That will really reveal the true infection rate within our city, but more importantly, help us get a handle on it. And then lastly, our health clinic partners are also willing to help in meeting the state's benchmarks for testing. This would be a county, a city, a school district, and a health clinic partnership to help our city overcome this challenge. And this would look similar to what my colleague, Council Member Carbasi, secured for his uh, district too up in Northwest. And that's what we do in times of crisis. We work with each other, we help each other, we build consensus, and then we find solutions. So with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Council Member Michael Carbasi. Good morning. I wanna just real quick, just thank the people that are here today. Our community partners, Nathan Ollie with the Chamber, Leanne Eager from EDC, and my council colleagues, Mayor-elect Jerry Dyer and Mayor Brand. This is what collaboration looks like. This is what progress looks like. Uh, it takes hard work and those of us willing to be in the arena and do the work to do the people's business and get things moving and reopen this city. Now, along with my colleagues, Council, Pre council Member Luis Chavez and Council Vice President Paul Caprioglio, we will be announcing to the council just this afternoon for their consideration, a bill to permit outdoor dining at restaurants in accordance with new regulations by the California ABC. And this is an effort to help restaurants uh, and the California ABC is also on board because now they're issuing what's called the COVID-19 Temporary Catering Authorization. Restaurants have been especially hard hit by the pandemic. In fact, they're so important that the restaurants actually contribute to 16% of our sales tax base 
and thousands of jobs in this community. And this is our effort to be able to have new options offering outdoor dining in areas that are not currently licensed. Areas will also include indoor areas that aren't currently approved by the ABC, sidewalks, outdoor areas in close proximity to the restaurants, and po possibly parking lots with safety measures. This is the beginning of a conversation. And as we move forward to reopen Fresno's economy, we're gonna have to be able to embrace different ideas and look at all of our options so we can help move things forward and secure the jobs in our community that we've lost because of COVID. Now this may not work for everyone, but some restaurants will benefit from this option more because of outdoor dining areas and well-ventilated or open-air areas. And I look forward to working with the restaurant industry along with the, my colleagues and the mayor and mayor-elect on other strategies to help them reopen and recover. Restaurants, again, are a val very valuable part of our economy, and this is what collaborative work looks like. We are listening and we are serving. Lastly, um, I, uh, I want to make it clear that what we're doing is making it very clear to the residents of Fresno that we hear you and that we are very interested in protecting our small businesses and their workers and the working families that are so valuable to them because they do matter. And, but we're not only protecting lives today, we're working to protect livelihoods. And as we today start the process of reopening our economy, rebuilding our economy, I am going to introduce legislation to my council colleagues for their consideration very soon. And what I'm going to be asking is for them to rescind all existing fines for open business citations in this city. This includes great businesses like the Elbow Room, Crazy Bernie's Furniture, Fresno Chrysler Dodge. And this will not, though, include any flagrant violators or those fined for price gouging. Because it's one thing when you're a business struggling to provide for yourself and for your employees, it's another thing when a business tries to make, you, make it difficult for you to provide. And I don't think that we should just find people for doing what they have to do to survive. And now that we're moving forward and we've allowed retail to open, this is just the next step in that healing process. Again, thank you all for being here and thanks to my colleagues for working on this great collaborative effort. Back to the mayor. Let me first acknowledge uh, Nathan Ali from the Chamber of Commerce and Leon Eager from EDC who have been with me solidly for the past three and a half years, not just this recent time, I appreciate you and your organization and what you've done. I also want to give an acknowledgement to the Fresno Recovery Committee that we just met this morning, a very diverse group of people that have heard our, our uh, proposal and have uh, basically unanimously accepted it. Um, so with that, we'll take questions. What's, what's holding us back on that is this, the county and the, and the state of California regulate the restaurants. So once they achieve their variance, and they're in, they've been in negotiation since uh, Monday, once we get that, we have the green light. And, and when I open restaurants, it's not going to be 20%, 30%. There's over 1,000 restaurants, from big ones to small ones. They all go at the same time. So that's going to be a challenge to us to go and educate people who will translate this order out in four different languages. We'll have people from the chamber and EDC and the city of Fresno helping people uh, in code enforcement, helping people get set up. Some are already there, some are probably a long way from there. But they all go on the same timetables. Nobody has any preference. And restaurant business is probably close to 20% of our economy. A lot of our sales tax come out of that. So we want to get people back to work, get these businesses that have suffered for almost the past eight weeks to get them back on, on board. With Mike and his legislation on the patio, outdoor patio, gives restaurants, some smaller ones, the opportunity to get some more floor space to make up for the lack of uh, revenue they'd have by not being at full, full 100%. Uh, just to your, to, to your very specific question, the state has made it clear that they're not putting a capacity limitation on restaurants when they reopen. So they're not going to say you could only open to 20 or 50% capacity. What the state has indicated is when you open, you have to adhere to social distancing. So social distancing might allow one restaurant to open 80%, 90% capacity. Others, it might limit that, um, that level. That's why Member Carbasi is bringing forward an item that would allow outdoor dining to also exist to increase the physical ability for restaurants to adhere to social distancing. But there is no cap or hard number from the state. The governor, being in the restaurant business in the past, knows that every restaurant is a different size. All we're worried about in the state is, is social distancing. Can you put those um, mitigation factors in place? Can, can the 
Yes, the criteria is on our website. Uh, in fact, we uh, the criteria is on the CDC website as well as the state of California, and we will push that out uh, to individuals or at least ha them have the access to it. Yeah. So so here's here's the 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 issue at hand. Currently, restaurants are not allowed to open uh, in the county of Fresno for dining in until they get a variant from the state of California. Uh, Madera just received a variant. There were some businesses that opened up immediately. Uh, there are other businesses, like I uh, had a conversation today with Lorraine Salazar. She has a restaurant in Madera. They're not opening up until June 1st. And the reason is they want to make sure that they have the appropriate safety measures in place. The city of Fresno uh, is going to abide by uh, the county of Fresno and the state in waiting for that variance before we open up or allow for in uh, restaurant dining. The order that we have before us already states once the variance is, a, is allowed or given, restaurants can open up. And to what Council President Arias was talking about, every restaurant's different. And uh, some of the restaurants have already taken steps, for example, in order to utilize each of their booths. They are putting some form of a plexiglass uh, between booths so that they can have a physical barrier. The reason the state of California did not get into the details of 40% occupancy, 50%, is not only because of the configuration, but the fact that some businesses are able to go the extra step and provide physical barriers that will keep people safe and allow for appropriate social distancing. Sure. Thank you. So the, the question is, uh, what, what are the requirements for a mask inside of a restaurant? Uh, again, when a person is seated at a, a table, uh, there is not going to be any requirement to have a mask on. Uh, certainly that, that would not make sense. It's difficult, uh, if not impossible, to eat with a mask on. Uh, however, we do know that at times when you walk into a business, a uh, restaurant, there may be uh, several people waiting to be seated. Uh, that is the appropriate time to have a mask on until they are seated. And I think that's a reasonable measure that we're taking. And I, I, I do know that there was a, a lot of discussion we had about the mask. and People had strong feelings uh, one way or the other. But at the end of the day was what can we do to maximize the safety of people as well as maximize the number of businesses that we get open. I, I do know that there are a group of pastors not only locally but across the state of California that have submitted a plan to the governor uh, the governor uh, sent that plan back with some additional information that they needed in order to be able to feel safe about opening churches. Uh, part of the discussion has been, can you open church in small groups? Uh, that would be have group settings at homes that you feed online, and then uh, within each of the buildings in church, maybe you could have groups of 10 or 15. Uh, and so they're working towards that. I think uh, it's no no. Um, you know, I think people understand the fact that at least one church here locally has said they're going to open up uh, the 31st of May uh, in, a, in a small group setting. Um, and they have a, a plan together for that. Uh, much of this is still up in the air in the state of California. But what we do know is it's not up to the city of Fresno. And it is up to the state of California to offer that variance for congregations to meet again, just like it is for entertainment venues, just like it is for restaurants. So, as you know, um, Mayor Leg Dyer likes easy questions, and he gives the enforcement questions to me, apparently. Um, to your question about um, egregious um, and flagrant violations, uh, we've taken the position in this order that that will still be uh, the responsibility of court enforcement to enforce. We want to make sure that any business who, for, for, uh, in a flagrant and egregious way, violates the order and puts the public health at immediate risk, will be cited uh, with a administrative fine. They, of course, have the ability to 
um, appeal that fine and go through the process of the appeal process, but we expect that we're gonna have very few. As an example, of the 1,900 restaurants we have, only one of them has been fined. Of the 23,000 businesses, approximately 17 have been fined. The vast majority of our business owners and residents have complied with the order. We anticipate we'll have significant voluntary compliance with this order as well, but we will have the ability to address those that um, pose an immediate threat to the public health and safety of the city through an administrative fine. Um, but with that, before we get to a fine, code enforcement typically gives you two or three warnings, provides you the support. One additional factor for businesses, the council will be considering uh, pretty soon um, setting aside and funding approximately $250,000 towards the purchase of facial masks so that we can make them available to small businesses who may not have the means or the access to facial masks so that that doesn't become impediment to them honoring the order of facial masks inside a business. So that will be forthcoming. It is our effort as a city to say, we're not only asking you to do something small business, but we're gonna provide you the ability to fulfill that commitment. And it's gonna be a significant boost uh, to the small businesses so that they don't have to rely on the open market for facial coverings for their customers. That's actually next week, so. <laughs> but we know there's gonna be a, a major challenge. I think based on my conversations with other big city mayors, uh, we're relatively in good shape compared to like Anaheim, Los Angeles, and so on. There's still a chance of getting some of the CARES money applied to revenue shortfalls, but we can't rely on that. It's a possibility of something, another act of Congress, we can't rely on that. So we're gonna go forward next week based on what we know and what we have right now. But We'll get through it. We're not as bad as the other uh, cities. Well, we wouldn't leave that to... Okay, the question is, what would it take uh, I guess data-wise or metrics-wise for us to reverse or slow down the process because we're spiking in terms of the number of infected infections. And really the, the main metric is the hospital beds available, which are several, there's many beds available right now. To me, it would be hard. Once you let the genie out of the bottle, it's gonna be hard to not put them back in there. I think Fresno County in general is moving in the right directions, will be measured by the metrics. They've substantially increased their testing in the last couple of weeks. So you're seeing 900 to 1,000 tests a day. You know, two or three months ago, or two months ago, that was probably one to 200 a day. So that's naturally gonna go up. But we're monitoring, working close, on my subcommittee and my, uh, for health insurance, they are closely monitoring the metrics on that. And, and if, if I may make go ahead. Yeah. Just, um, just for your reference, thus far, the city of Fresno represents 53% of the population of the county, but our infection rate only represents 47% of the county infection. So we believe that these early actions that we took have allowed us not to be the lead and primary you know, um, city that is pushing our healthcare capacity forward. So we're gonna be monitoring a lot of healthcare indicators and listening to the healthcare professionals. Um, that's why keeping an order that allows us to turn it back if we have to, or make some accommodations is extremely critical for us. Medeiros had a question about small about timing. I'm gonna answer that real quick. Um, so my family is a small business, so I can answer this from experience. One of the reasons why it's not immediate and there's some time, and the mayor kind of touched, uh, mayor elect touched on this, is it's gonna be difficult getting people back to work. There's onboarding with that. And if we, you know, we issued the green light, but if we go immediately, we don't want businesses having to get stuck with those delays. So it was also an effort to be more pro-business and give them the time they need to be able to open responsibly. Sure, the, the, the question is if we do get the variance, Fresno County receives the variance um, to allow restaurants to open to get into 2.5. Uh, 
immediately they will be allowed to open. Uh, there will be criteria that they have to comply with, um, but that uh, criteria has been set forth. And quite frankly, the vast majority of the restaurants out there that I've been in communication with the, the business owners, they have already been taking steps within their business to put in plexiglass, uh, to have markings inside and outside of their restaurant. So most of them are ready to go now. Uh, part of the issue is going to be, will they have the, um, the gloves that, are, that they need? Will they have the mask uh, that they need? Um, and will they be gouged uh, by vendors for those masks? And so, in essence, uh, they'll be ready to go, uh, we'll be ready to go when they're ready to go, and uh, hopefully uh, that will come within the next uh, few days. The, um, the truth is we are increasing testing in Fresno County. As you know, the numbers of testing have uh, gone up dramatically over the last couple of weeks. It stands to reason that we're going to see increased number of positive tests. That is what drives that, that curve line. We expected that. Uh, what we also monitor, though, is hospital stays and ICU beds that are being occupied by COVID-19 patients. Uh, last I heard, we were well over 50% capacity for hospital beds in uh, Fresno County, uh, and that is good news for us. We are taking responsible steps to be able to phase in business, which is the purpose of the mask, so that we do not uh, create any type of a surge or spread, community spread of COVID-19 in Fresno. So we, we are well aware of the, uh, the curve, and we're taking steps to address it. Luis? Let me be very honest about that specific question because I get that call from residents. The fact that Fresno County did not ramp up their testing early on is why you're seeing those numbers trend upwards. We have in comparison areas like Los Angeles County that has a jurisdiction of 5 million population and they were able to test every single person and make that available. We are behind the ball here, and, and I've always believed in being upfront and honest with constituents. So now we're at a point where, keep in mind that the state has mandated or required 1,500 tests daily, which is not a big significant number. And even with all this time period that has occurred, we're still at 1,000, which is why the city said we're going to jump in and help the county fulfill its responsibility with regards to testing. And that's why we're bringing to the table $5 million. But the truth of the matter is we're behind the eight ball. We were not testing when we should have been testing, and now we're testing. And whatever that conversation leads to, we're going to have to monitor those numbers on a daily basis. And what has been frustrating was the fact that we did not select testing sites where we know that a lot of those essential and vulnerable populations exist. And so we're going to have to keep a close eye on what that looks like. But again, we're being a partner with the county, but we're also urging the county to, 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 to step up and do their part in their responsibility. And, and just a last comment on the curve, because um, I was in these chambers when we put up the health care curve chart. So the curve is two phases. The first phase is the if, if infection rate. The infection rate has increased and will continue to increase given that the county is finally testing at the level that they should have been two months ago. The curve that we have monitored and that we are basing our judgment to reopen in a measured and responsible way is the curve that represents the health care capacity in our county. We have sufficient health care capacity to ensure that if there is additional infection rates, which we expect there will be more, it will not result in people dying because they don't have access to an ICU bed or they don't have access to a hospital room. Um, as a matter of fact, the state of California has begun to take back the backup hospital that we set up in the convention center because we've managed the healthcare system so well. So that is the most critical um, healthcare curve that we're looking at is a capacity to treat people as they become infected and need hospitalization.